What's up guys, my name is Brad. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, on this channel we talk about welding and fabrication, CNC machining, Fusion 360 tips, and we'll dive into some really cool projects, so if that sounds interesting to you, hit that subscribe button. On today's video, we will touch on how to achieve quality colorful welds, as well as why oxidation is occurring, and how varying base metal temperatures will determine the welds color. Disclaimer. Just so we are clear, oxidation is okay and not okay in different industries and in different situations. Now that we've got that out of the way, when any reactive metal, anything that reacts to atmosphere in a certain temperature range, is exposed to atmosphere, some form of oxidation will occur. That can be as simple as grinding a mild steel bracket and not quenching it in water as you go so it gets hotter and hotter until the material reacts to atmosphere and changes colors. So to explain that a little bit better, oxidation creates a layer, an extremely thin layer that I can't even convert for you. What you need to know is as the layer thickness increases, the wavelength of light transmitted changes and so does the color of the weld. Let's talk about cup size first. Here's the number six standard cup. This is an old school cup for reactive metals at this point. It's great for aluminum and controlling oxide cleaning line widths on aluminum depending on material thickness, but let's kick this out of the video. Gas lenses are the new craze and for good reason. The kick pardon my French. With the gas lens and its diffuser technology, it lays a blanket of argon over your weld pool nicely diffused instead of a turbulent tornado of doom that this cup pukes out. All right, that cup should be out for the count. The downfall to welding stainless tube with a small cup like a number seven gas lens is that the cup really isn't big enough to take long runs around stainless steel tube. You can only go a little farther than its radius before it starts to allow atmosphere to bleed into your weld pool and cause bad oxidation. This really isn't efficient for our discussion today, so I'm also going to boot this cup from the topic. In all its glory. This laboratory grade creation has swept the welding community by storm and delivers even better gas coverage with its larger diameter and second diffuser that sits inside. This bad man the jump is made by my buddy Michael Furick along with many other cups in his line, like this number five for aluminum. No offense, but it's not for this video either. Back on topic. This brass and glass hybrid is my go-to for almost everything. This is a rainbow slant argon munchen machine and it gets the job done on steel, stainless steel, ink and L, and titanium without a problem. This cup is great because you can run a lot further with excellent gas coverage shielding your weld so you have less tie-ins and one and a quarter to one and a half inch long runs that have adequate gas coverage all the way around. This is my go-to cup on stainless steel tube and titanium. Now with all that out of the way, let's get down to business. Travel speed and heat input have a lot to do with your weld's aesthetics. Too much amperage and not fast enough travel speed results in a fiery mess of nastiness. It's all about balance. Welds exposed to atmosphere at certain temperatures will oxidize and turn different colors. So the goal is to always weld with just enough amperage to penetrate, but don't overdo it because extra heat is unnecessary here. When your post flow stops, you want your weld to be at a temperature that will leave acceptable oxidation, not overheated in gray or black. That's bad. Torch angle factors into this especially around tube or pipe, but let's save that for another video. You can check out my very first YouTube video on cup sizes and how to use them by clicking the card above. What is your go-to TIG cup? Tell me in the comments, I'm reading and replying to everything. As you're welding along, the weld is being protected from atmosphere by your shielding gas. As the cup moves away, so does your shielding gas, and if your material isn't cool enough, you can see it oxidize. This is an example of a semi grayed out weld that's quite dull, not really ideal. Post flow is the time after you terminate the arc that argon continues to flow out of your torch's cup. Now either you have adjustable post flow or a fixed post flow depending on amperage, but both work fine. If you're running a machine that doesn't have adjustable post flow, no worries. A simple arc initiation where you restart will keep the argon flowing for a few more seconds and that's all you need. All right, so let's recap. If you want a colorful weld or even a colorless oxidation free weld, we need to remember a few key things. A gas lens is important. Cup size plays a large factor in your weld aesthetics. The larger the cup, the more surface area the gas covers and the longer you can travel with fewer tie-ins. Cup size will also depend on what you're welding so one size doesn't fit all. Argon cools the weld as well as protects it. You can get a colorful or colorless weld with the number seven cup, 
but you can only travel so far before it oxidizes behind the cup. Travel speed gets a lot of people when welding reactive alloys. Even if you're as slow as a slug in creating unnecessary heat, your argon coverage will protect the weld and it may look fine, but if it exceeds the alloy's max temperature, you could be negatively impacting the structure of the material. The typical rule for steel is one amp per one thousandth of material thickness. This tube is 0 0.0625 or 1.6 millimeters thick, so we would use about 60 amps, right? No, wrong. Stainless and titanium, among other alloys, don't always allow for that rule. They don't require as much heat so you can get away with less amperage than the rule stated above. I weld this tube at 45 to 50 amps for full penetration. My machine is set to 65 amps for easily wetting out my toes and penetrating when the tube is cold. Post flow is the magic ingredient to complete our recipe. This must be long enough to shield the weld while the base material cools to the desired temperature. Straw colors oxidize around 300 degrees and purples and blues occur in the 400 to 600 degree range. Whether you want a colorful weld or an oxidation free weld, the same steps apply. So that's gonna wrap up this video today. If you learned anything from this video, hit that like button. I appreciate each and every single one of you watching. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll be reading and replying to everybody. As always, thank you so much. Have a good day and we'll catch you next time.